Hi, I'm Norm Carollo, a uh, furniture maker at Perillo Design and woodworking educator at uh, WoodSkills. And today I'd like to discuss the, uh, the bridle joint created with exclusively uh, using hand tools. So I developed a process to create a, uh, a bridle joint using hand tools and with, without any use of any machines whatsoever. And normally this type of joint is normally created using machines because of the accuracy and precision involved with the tight fit. So a, a bridal joint is uh, essentially a open mortise antenna and it's widely used in uh, frame construction as a corner joint, but it can also be used to extend boards, to extend two boards like this. So you can have a bridal joint doing, doing that. But this is mostly uh, its use is, uh, in frame construction as a, uh, as a corner joint. So I've got another example here. And I've got various examples, but the hand tools I'll be using is a Japanese Ryoba because of its thin blade and thin kerf, and this allows me to attain considerable uh, precision in the cut, along with a, uh, a miter jack saw that I've, I've developed. It, it originates from a French uh, design of the uh, 1800s, uh, mid to late 1800s, and this is our modern version with a pivoting blade and both a uh, crosscut configuration and a rip configuration, and uh, this pivots. Uh, you can flip the blade over also to, uh, for left to right hand orientation. So I've described this considerably in uh, my, my most recent videos, the three or four videos, about the uh, miter jack saw and the Ryoba saw to create uh, very precise and accurate joinery. So I also use uh, two spacers to, in conjunction with the process. One is a, uh, I call it a male or a, and a female spacer, and these are used to offset the, uh, the thickness of the kerf within the cut itself because the blade's so thin. So I use one for the, uh, for the mortise component and one for the tenon component. And I'll, uh, I'll elaborate on this further and describe, uh, describe the process in detail in the upcoming video segments. So uh, enjoy and uh, stay tuned. I'm Norm Perillo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. <clears throat> so I'll be creating this, uh, this bridle joint in this uh, video segment and it's a square bridle as opposed to a miter bridle which I'll most likely do in the next video. So this is a uh, this is a male tenon portion and this is a female mortise. It's also uh, known as a uh, it's an open mortise joint, so it fits. Uh, it's just done entirely by hand with a saw, and uh, I'll demonstrate the whole procedure. So I've had to label these because I'll be making quite a few of these. So I've, um, I'll just put this aside. And what I have is two blank cords, uh, exactly the same thickness, or three quarter inch thick. And uh, what I'll do is I'll mark. I'll mark the, uh, the depth of the tenon using the other opposing uh, board as a reference. Using a marking knife. So I use a marking knife and then I, I enhance the, uh, the marked or the scribed line with the pencil. So that's the uh, actual depth of the tenon for the uh, mortise. And I'll just mark it all around just to just ensure I don't make any mistakes. When you're cutting you really don't want to go past the baseline which is what I'm drawing now. Now I'll do the same thing for the other board. 
You can do this various ways. I, uh, this is a technique I use. Once I scrub the line, I enhance it. And then do the same. Mark it all around. So once, I, once I've scribed one, uh, one face, I don't really need to scribe the other faces. Or edges. So that's done. So we uh, so next is to either create the tenon or the mortise, the open mortise, and I'll uh, I'll do that. But I'll uh, before that I wanted to uh, delineate the uh, or mark off the uh, the actual tenon, the thickness. So I've preset my marking gauge for a quarter inch and that equates to one third of the thickness of the board. So I'll just mark all around. So I can actually do this from either face because it's equidistant and it's a quarter inch. I'll do this on both uh, both ends of uh, both boards, and then I'll uh, I'll explain the uh, the next step, which is introducing a slight offset into the uh, into the curve, or actually the opening. So once I've done this, oh, I need to do the other board. So once I've done this, I do the same thing. I, uh, I enhance the uh, mark there, scribe line with a pencil, just for clarity. And that's done. So they're both uh, marked, and the premise uh, premise is to uh, to remove the tenon portions, the outside shoulders, on one board, one end of one board, and then create a recess or a mortise in this end. So what I'll do is I'll actually uh, so let's pick this as the uh, the mortise, and I'll mark this off. So this is the waste part, just so we don't make any mistakes. In this case, the uh, the outside tenons. This would be the waste, and the middle part is the actual tenon. So, uh, so that's the tenon, and this is the the mortise. Many fit together, and uh, the premise is to. Uh, because there, there is a kerf involved, I'm going to be sawing using a Japanese Ryoba saw for the most part. And if, because there's a, there is a kerf, it's a very small 132nd inch kerf, for example, I need to allow for that in my measurements. 
So I created two, two different spacers to offset the, uh, the female portion and the male portion and I'll describe that next and I'll give a demonstration of that next. I'll move on to a different workbench to, uh, to be able to do this, perform this. So I'll start with, uh, I'm on a different bench now with some holdfasts and I'm using my, uh, my tenoning or miter jack saws, both the cross cut and the, uh, and the rip version. And uh, these are the spacers I've just referred to. So I've marked them off. One is a, uh, it's for a bridal joint, one's for a female and male. Now they're slightly offset. I mean, they're slightly different in size. So just to allow for the difference in, uh, in the kerf. So the combined difference in, uh, in thicknesses allows for a kerf. And I'll just show that next. So I'll, uh, because we're doing the, uh, the female, the mortised component, I'm going to uh, select the female spacer. So what I do next is I uh, clamp it down using the hole fast. Hole fasts are great for this. They're quick and uh, they do an excellent job. I'll just demonstrate that. So I use the, uh, I established the cut using the uh, both the cross cut at the beginning and then the rip version of the, uh, the miter jack saw. And then I bring it over to a different workbench again. And I continue the cut with a Japanese Ryoba. Now these blades are Japanese Ryoba blades, so everything is uniform. The spacers are exactly the same thickness. So all the curves are, uh, the curves I'll be working with are all the same size or thickness, of, I should say. I'll start with the uh, cross cut side. I'm creating the, uh, the mortise, the, uh, well, I don't go very far with this. I just, uh, just basically start to cut with this so it's easier because the rip saws tend to grab the wood at the, point at the very beginning. So I'm done with that. Now I, uh, there's a, a rip tooth configuration of the essentially the same saw. I try to keep the work the uh, workbench surface clean because it's actually using the the workbench surface as a reference for the cut. And if you uh, if you watched any of my previous videos on this, I have three videos describing how this works, and then uh, you need a flat reference surface to, uh, to perform the cut. The technique I use is I go down 45 degrees on either side as far as I can go to deepen the cut so I can so maintain the straight cut when I'm sawing it afterwards. I perform this 45 degree cut there. And halfway already. So I'm actually 60% of the cuts already done. I just need to remove that mid middle material. So that's it for one uh, one side of the, uh, the mortise. You notice how straight that cut is. This is the, uh, and it's offset towards the center. So it's uh, the, towards the waist side, I should say, the cut is. And how straight it is. So it's just a matter of extending the cut, extending the cut afterwards. You notice uh, it's uh, uniform on both sides and it's quite deep. It's approximately 60% of the depth of the, uh, of the mortise already. And it's, uh, so I'll just continue, I'll flip this over, use the same spacer, of course. <clears throat> I'll start to cut again. So 
claws tend to grab at the very beginning, so that's why I'm using a, I'm starting with the crust that's some, the finer teeth. You really don't want to go cut right through with the cross cut saw you can brutal forever. But it's just uh, it works fine for this. So I uh, switched to the the rip tooth configuration. I do the 45-45 on either side and then I, I meet them uh, both in the middle and I remove that triangle in the middle. It's an excellent technique to be able to keep the cut straight. But if you're doing this freehand with the saw or with these uh, miter jack saws. That's done. I'll just release it. So you notice how straight the uh, how straight the cut is on through on both edges and the uh, and the end. So it's almost perfect. So you considered machine made cut so far. So the the goal is to <laughs> extend that and keep that straight. And then we remove the, uh, the material for this uh, mortise component. And what I'll do is since I'm here, I'll actually just uh, I'll work on this. Uh, on the tenon portion. I'll be able to do that. I, I, uh, I substitute the female spacer with the male spacer. And what that does is it actually uh, it actually has a different it brings the, uh, the component, the board, up to a different level and then I'm able to, to accommodate or to allow for the, uh, the thickness of the curve. So I did experiment with this uh, with these spacers beforehand, and I've optimized them for a three-quarter inch stock. So I'll go through the same sequence again. I'll start with the. Uh, so if you uh, so this spacer is essentially a little thicker, a very uh, fraction thicker than. Than the female spacer, and what it does is that because it because it raises the board, I have a slightly fatter tenon to allow that little gap in the uh, in the mortise component. So I'll just you know what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll set this up at a different angle so you can actually watch me cutting this. So again, I'm cutting into the, uh, the tenon portion now. So I'm cutting, creating the, uh, the tenon. And I'll switch to the uh, rip saw. extend the cut as far down as the, uh, the edge of the board as possible to maintain a straight cut on one side and then I actually do the same thing on this side. And that's the beauty of this system. It uses the, uh, the workbench surface as a reference for the cut and for the saw. So it's, uh, it's a, a very uh, accurate and precise. So I've done this side. Just remove that triangle of waste in the middle. You 
you're working with hole fasts, you, uh, you release them by hitting the, uh, the back part. So that's the beginning of the tenon. And now we... If you watch my uh, previous videos, you'll uh, I describe the, uh, the miter jack saw quite a bit. I go into a deep dive into uh, how it works, and you can actually pivot the uh, the blade so you can use both sides, either a cross cut or a, or a rip side, if you only have one of these. I happen to have two, or actually have three. But if you have the one, that's that's how it works. It pivots on this point, and uh, so it's a matter of removing these bolts and pivoting. And uh, so if you flip it over you have the right hand orientation. So I'm left handed and uh, and I've set it up this way but it's just a matter of flipping it and, and then you're set for right hand. So now we have the, uh, we've established a cut a little bit and now I move on to the, uh, the rip tooth saw. Four cuts, two per component, two cuts per, for the mortise and two cuts for the uh, for the tenon. I always put the blade guards back on because they're uh, the saws are incredibly sharp. They have hardened teeth, so the uh, the blades last very long. Apparently. I've only had them for a few weeks now, so I'm not sure, but... Also, the, uh, the width of the boards is, uh, I think, two and a half inches, or close to two and a half inches. About three quarter by two and a half, and about a foot long, so... So we now have both the, uh, the mortise and the tenon component done. So we have completed uh, the bulk of the cuts using the, uh, the miter jack saws and the, uh, with uh, using my workbench surface as a reference. And this is the, uh, the cut so far. You can notice how straight they are. And you'll also notice that the, uh, the tenon portion is slightly fatter than the uh, mortise portion. So once I've completed the cuts and removed the waste from the mortise, this should slide right in at the right depth. So there's a few more steps involved, but I just wanted to demonstrate how accurate and precise uh, you, can, uh, you can attain the, uh, the level of accuracy and precision attained just through uh, using hand tools, in this case Japanese Ryoba blades and saws. So I'll just continue this at the next workbench. So we're going to be continuing at this uh, workbench with the face vise and this is the uh, the bridle joint we uh, the final bridle joint we'd like to complete and uh, so I'll just put this aside and these are the four uh, two components mortise portion and tenon portion so we need to extend these cuts that we've established at the other uh, workbench using the mutter jack saws right down to the base lines and I'll be doing that next so it's just a matter of clamping them in and I use a uh, I use a technique of having the board at 45 degrees and working with uh, one edge and the, the end of the board and then flipping it and, and again similar to what I've done before and then you working the other side, the other edge and then extending that triangle in the middle down and this ensures a straight curve. down to uh, both the baseline and the uh, the edge of the uh, the intersection of the uh, end of the board and the other edge one curve 
this is a uh, this blade is uh, exactly the same as the blade on the miter jack saw. So I'm using the uh, the rip side of the blade. This is a Japanese Ryoba with both a cross cut and the uh, rip tooth configuration on either side. A Japanese Ryoba. Ryoba means double sided saw. Well, that's done. So I've extended the lines. Notice how straight they are again. So now I flip it over and then do the same thing on this side. Well, this is the uh, the tenon. And this is the importance of uh, marking off the uh, the waste portion. You can easily get confused. Lose track of where you are. I'm at the baseline here and I can actually saw a little bit further there. So the, uh, the cuts have been established completely. So I just need to remove that little waste portion in the middle, the triangle portion. Again, on both both sides of the uh, tenon, both shoulders. This is where I am so far. So that's the tenon. So I would remove these uh, the shoulders next on this piece, on this component. Now on this piece, we extend uh, the curves down. This is the uh, mortise component. Again, Tilt it at a 45 degree angle and extend the cuts. One cut. Well, the reason for uh, for tilting the board at 45 and working only one end and one uh, edge is to, uh, to ensure that the kerf is straight on one side without having to view the other side so then I can flip it and work the other side. I have it at full view. have been extended on both uh, both sides of the mortise. Now it's just a matter of moving that middle portion, similar to what I did with the uh, with the tenon board component. Try not to go past the baseline. Okay, so I think we're done with the. Uh, we're done with the Ryoba for now. I find these saws are, uh, the cuts are very fine and they tend to produce quite a bit of dust as opposed to uh, western saws that produce more thicker, a thicker dust, closer shaving and thickness. This is the mortise portion and this is the tenon portion. So what I'll do now is I can do either the, uh, the mortise or the tenon. What I'll do is, uh, and I'll, do the t I'll do the mortise first. I'll set this up for the next uh, for the next sequence. So I'm going to be using my uh, miter jack mounted uh, along the edge of my workbench with a uh, little offset component to hold it up here and I use the, uh, my end vise to actually clamp the keel in. So I demonstrated this in the earlier videos. And what I'll do is I need, I'm going to be removing the, the shoulder components on the tenon. 
using the uh, miter jack saw. So what I do is, this, is uh, this equates to the actual offset of the spacer for the miter jack saw. So I'll lower this to an approximate height. I'm trying to keep the board square, of course. So that's uh, even, I can actually, just to go one step further, I'll, uh, I'll check for square. That's good. Tight. So I use this, the premise is to use the, uh, the surfaces of the jaw. They're both in the same plane. And I, I, also, I use the miter jack saw with that reference, using this as a reference surface and this spacer that equates to this spacer to make the first cut and then I rotate and do the other cut. So this, this ensures that I have two shoulders at the same height. So I'll just... Uh, easy to do this actually with this saw, it's a cross cut saw and it cuts extremely well quickly. So that's one shoulder. So without moving the, uh, the component I cut the other shoulder. I just flip this around. other shoulder. So just a little cleaning up in the corner on the left leftover of the cut and I have a I have my uh, my tenon. So it's uh, it's quite straight and uh, very uh, fine finely cut and it's uh, it's a very close to a machine made tenon. So I'll put this aside and then we'll work on the uh, on the mortise. So next I'll be uh, removing the waste from the mortise component and I'll be using, uh, I've, I've tried different techniques on how to do this with a coping saw and all that but I much prefer using uh, a chisel and I'll demonstrate that so I'll clamp this down. I'm using a tail vise system I developed a few years ago. And what I'll do is uh, Remove some waste from one side on this side and then flip it over and or keep removing waste and see how far I get. So I'm using a chisel that's just a little bit narrower there in the actual uh, tenon, I mean the mortise. So what I do is I, uh, I delineate the uh, baseline using uh, one strike and then I remove some waste from this side. Now it's important to use a chisel that's narrower than the actual opening or the mortise so you don't Let's just keep going down. Next step is to uh, just remove a, a sliver of wood or a So well, that's the technique, it's just to just keep going down. Again, you can do this different ways. You can use a coping saw and just work around and remove the, uh, the complete tenon. You can start with that, but...
good practice not to be too aggressive with the uh, removal and just try to keep it uh, possibly to about an eighth of an inch or, or three sixteenths of an inch per slice. We're moving along, it's going to take a while. <laughs> The other part of the, uh, the the sequence of removing it from, from a different side. The important part is to establish the baseline on uh, on either edge. I mean, the tenon fits well within the mortise, so I'll just take this at the same point. This is important. How important it is to delineate or mark your your baselines. technique is a little more tedious longer but it's a it's a cleaner cut so There isn't much left to go. This is where we're at so far. So. is complete down to the baseline or approximately to the baseline it's just a matter of cleaning up the uh, the bottom of the uh, mortise but well, you notice how clean it is and everything so I'll just uh, I'll just use a chisel to uh, clean it up when you're doing this 
ensure your hands are not anywhere near the uh, where the chisel might slip and I'll try fitting the, uh, the tendon into the mortise now. A little more tuning at the base of the, uh, the mortise and I'll dry fit the uh, tendon into the, uh, the uh, open mortise. And that's the joint. Well, it's just a straight off a saw essentially, aside from that little chiseling at the bottom. And the, uh, that's how tight it is. So. So it does really depend on the on the curve of your saw. In this case, I use a Ryoba, which probably has the one of the absolute thinnest curves you could possibly have on a on a cross cut or a rip saw. So, so that makes a difference in the technique, also on that. So it's fairly uh, not overly tight, but tight enough joints. So it just needs a little glue, and it's all set. So it's just a matter of, uh, and of course everything lines up here. So I've marked everything because I have several of these joints I've been working at lately. This is, uh, so I like to mark them so I know they're a, sort of a match set. Well, it's a fairly uh, straightforward joint to make. Not complex at all. It's very understandable. There aren't any 45 degree angles involved. Although there is a 45 degree version of this that I'll probably be doing next in my next video. And it's a very, very strong joint. There's plenty of uh, long grain to long grain surface contact. And this, uh, the glue will reinforce that and it's probably one of the strongest joints. It's just an open mortise antenna is what it is. So it's not housed. So it's a lot easier to, to create the mortise. So a bridle joint, great for uh, frames or construction or uh, stands for cabinets. So please subscribe to my YouTube woodworking channel where I share more of my woodworking techniques, my, uh, my woodworking philosophy, my thoughts on woodworking and uh, all the challenges I've experienced. And uh, I introduce some of the uh, new forms of woodworking I've discovered. And also visit uh, woodskills.com where I have a good selection of uh, my books, both in print and digital format on woodworking and uh, all my online courses and uh, I offer, also offer some woodworking plans. I have maintained a, uh, a regular blog on uh, what I've got going on in my workshop and uh, in woodworking in general. So enjoy!